Super Mario Bros. 2 for the NES is widely regarded as one of the most unique and innovative sequels in the Mario Bros. series. It stands out for many reasons because it almost has no direct relation to its predecessor, plays and feels differently whilst also allowing a choice of choosing one of four players and although it is the second game in the series, it doesn't follow on from events that took place in the Mushroom Kingdom. Instead Mario 2 takes place in a brand new world called Subcon which essentially is another name for the subconscious, which according to the internet states that the unconscious constantly communicates with the conscious mind via our subconscious and it is what provides us with a meaning to all our interactions with the world as filtered through your beliefs and habits. It communicates through feelings feelings, emotions, imagination, sensations and dreams. Sigmund Freud believed the subconscious to be a place where a lot of psychologically repressed wishes, desires, trauma and ideas deemed socially unacceptable are stored. Essentially anything that has happened to us here, good or bad, is stored in the subconscious. So why am I mentioning Sigmund Freud and the subconscious? Well, it's interesting that the developers made reference to the subconscious by calling this new world subcon as it is indeed a dream world and I have my own theories as to why the events of Super Mario Bros. 2 took place, which I will share with you later on in the review. However, in this new and unusual land, Mario, Luigi, Toad and Princess must work their way across these new levels, taking down various enemies, solving puzzles with the intention of climbing to the top of World 7 and fighting the game's new protagonist, Wart, who is causing chaos in Subcon and has turned the once peaceful land into one of terror. Whilst the original Mario Brothers had Mario collecting coins and power-ups, it followed a much simpler formula in that Mario had to go from left to right, stomping on enemies with only slight deviations from that route, particularly in Bowser's castle where he had to find the right combination of pipes or ledges to find the evil king of the Koopas. Super Mario Bros. 2 features enemies that cannot be destroyed by jumping on them. Levels now offer Mario and his cohorts a chance to go left and right whenever they choose, which is essential if certain items have been missed, and now features a whole host of new and dangerous baddies which make the Hammond Brothers look like a welcoming sight. So why the radical change as the first Mario Brothers was such a gigantic hit? Well, Nintendo already made a sequel which was built upon the first game's template and this was Japan's own Mario Brothers 2. The game featured the same core mechanics of the original but much tougher levels with insane weather effects and much more challenge. This was going to be released into the rest of the world until Nintendo decided that this Mario Brothers 2 would be far too difficult for gamers outside of Japan and would feature the same repetitive gameplay. So Nintendo made the decision to release a sequel which would feature everyone's favourite plumber and would use another Japan only game to do it. You probably already know by now that Mario 2 is essentially a build of another game released in Japan called Doki Doki Panic which is in many ways the exact same game. Each of the game's four characters Imogen, Mama, Lena and Papa have different attributes and are on a quest to defeat Wart to rescue Pokey and Peaky 2 whom he has captured. This game already had many Mario-esque elements in place and features some of the best graphics seen so far on an 8-bit system. So Nintendo had to think and really liked the fact that the four characters played a little differently than each other adding a depth of strategy, plus the game controlled really well and didn't replicate the first Mario Brothers too much. So the four characters were replaced with Mario, Luigi, Toad and Princess and this new cast of baddies was kept in and featured no Goombas, Koopa Troopers or even Cheep Cheeps to fight. In fact, this new roster of enemies and bosses offered unique and threatening attack patterns to offer up much more challenge. Nintendo also altered the storyline to fit in with these new changes and with everything ready, the game is ready to be released to the rest of the world. Video Game Story Mario was sleeping one night when he had a most unusual dream. He was climbing his way up a massive staircase when he found a strange door waiting for him at the top. Upon opening the door he finds himself in a strange new world, one which seems radically unfamiliar. As he stepped through he heard a voice explaining to him that Wart, an evil frog, has taken over the land of Subcon and has placed a curse on the inhabitants there. The voice begs Mario to please help them. After slowly waking up from his slumber, Mario tells the others about his strange dream. Later on, Mario, Luigi, Toad and the princess decide to go for a picnic. 
Upon doing so, they discover a strange cave in which they explore. Mario is shocked to find that the cave contains the exact same staircase that he had climbed upon in his dream. So all four head up to the top and find the door which leads to the world of Subcon. The door opens and all four drop through. The only way to get back home is to travel through Subcon and climb all the way up to World 7 in order to defeat Water and free the people of Subcon. I know it's a strange and interesting story, but it is one in which I'll be offering my own thoughts on a little bit later. Gameplay Super Mario Bros. 2 is a 2D platform strategy and puzzle game that allows you to play as Mario, Luigi, Toad or the Princess across 7 worlds throughout Subcon. Each character has their own attributes, strengths and weaknesses. For example, Luigi has the highest jump. Princess can jump quite high, but she can also float a little, which gives her a little bit more of an advantage. Mario is more average and doesn't have any special abilities. And Toad, however, is slightly faster and stronger than the others. Each character can, however, perform a super jump if you hold down, and this allows them to flash. All you need to do then is hit A and your character will jump even higher. As I mentioned earlier, Subcon differs from the Mushroom Kingdom in the way that it is not as linear and features the ability to move both left and right rather than just heading to the right as in the first game. Typically, each level is broken down into small sections with a task to overcome such as a locked door that needs to be opened, a ledge high up that needs to be reached, or a succession of platforming feats that must be achieved to access the next part of the stage. Ok, so in the last game Mario had to collect mushrooms, fire flowers, coins and the occasional invincibility star to help him get through the barrage of Bowser and Nasties, and he only really could have two hit points before losing a life. Rather than squashing the enemy this time round, you have the ability to pluck vegetables from the ground and throw them to take out anything in your path. Also, Mario can even pick up some of the subcon nasties and throw them at others to help clear a path. This time, Mario and his team have much more of an advantage over the enemies as they each have a power meter that increases to 4 if they can find mushrooms, meaning that they can take up to 4 hits before biting the bullet. However, to find them is not as simple as breaking a block. Hidden in each level are potions that reveal a door which leads to a dark version or section of the stage you are on. Provided you have placed the potion in the right place, it is here and only in here that our heroes can find these precious mushrooms. There are no fire flowers unfortunately, the only other power up is an invincibility star which appears when five cherries have been collected. As before it offers a brief period of invincibility to help get through some tricky sections. There are some extra lives hidden through the game but only really a handful. But Mario can use the potion and place it near a crop of vegetables, creating a door in which he has a brief amount of time to enter this dark section of the level and harvest coins. The potion can only be used twice on a level to accumulate these coins. If you try it a third time, the crop will just be vegetables. What a bummer. Instead of collecting 100 coins to get an extra life, the coins you collect are used at the end of each level in a slot machine in which you have to try and get three of a certain combination of pictures to gain a life. This can be extremely difficult as it's almost impossible to win. You can't just randomly mash buttons as this will get you nowhere. Instead I would recommend trying to time the first slot on a cherry as this guarantees your life no matter what the next two slots become. A lot of people do think that the bonus chance is a waste of time and is unfair, but with practice it is possible to accumulate many lives. I know it seems like I'm talking gibberish as many people just can't get the rhythm. I understand your frustrations as I had the same problems, but it all comes down to learning the timing of the slots. With practice you can easily get two or three cherries in a row, and if I can do it I know that you can. Typically at the end of each level you must face a boss character in order to be able to get to the next level. Often this tends to be Birdo, this ostrich who shoots eggs from his mouth, so you will be fighting him the most. As you progress through the game, Birdo gets tougher and tougher and his attacks get faster and he starts to shoot fire which can really throw you off your game. Other bosses include Mauser, the bomb throwing rodent who relentlessly throws bombs at our heroes, Triclide, three-headed snake who shoots fireballs and is a pain, fry guy who swoops menacingly in all directions again throwing fireballs, and claw grip the crab who throws rocks. 
I found each of these bosses to be extremely challenging, but by no means impossible. Unlike the first Mario Brothers, it's not just a case of jumping over them to hit a lever to kill them. Mario must get tough and throw either their projectiles back at them, or use the mushrooms that appear on most of the boss stages as weapons. What's really cool is that sometimes you'll face Birdo thinking he's the main boss, and then you just find out he's just a sub-boss, and the real threat awaits you a little bit further along. To finish a stage, you typically need to pick up a crystal ball that Birdo has in his stomach. Once he has taken enough hits, he perishes, and by picking the ball up, it vanishes and activates a bird's mouth, which you enter to the next stage or to a harder boss. If you are on a harder boss, once you defeat him, a door appears and going through it takes you to the bonus chance provided you have at least one coin. So you can probably tell by now that this is not just another average run of the mill platform game. Not only are the bosses tough, but many of Subcon's baddies will give you a run for your money. Shy guys patrol the ground, pacing back and forth. You have Sniffits which fire small projectiles which have caught me out on more than one occasion. And you have Pidgeots who patrol the skies on magic carpets. Bezos who swoop across the skies trying to mess up the gaming rhythm. And perhaps the most notorious of all, Phantos. So I mentioned right at the start that Mario Bros. 2 is a platform puzzle game and most of the puzzling will depend on you having to find keys to unlock doors which are essential to progressing further through the game. In every room with a key lurks this circular grinning baddie called Phantos who will attack you if you pick up and hold the key for long periods of time. So you have to pick it up and move then put it down before he gets to you. If you put it down, he flies away, so it becomes a softly softly catchy monkey method of getting the key to the locked door without alerting Phantos. If you are too late and hold the key too long, he will lunge at you, but remember that if you drop the key, he does vanish, so just keep plodding on and you will get used to it. Most of the game will rely on you dealing with significantly harder challenges which involve the key and Phantos. Most people don't realise that Mario 2 is also a strategy game, not just in terms of choosing the right character for each level, but also in terms of using the potions. I mentioned earlier that you can only use the potion twice per level, well this is true, however the potion respawns an infinite number of times, so if you can find a potion and a huge crop of vegetables in a level, then you can use it here to acquire coins as I mentioned. However, once you find a new door or backtrack, the potion reappears. So you can use the potion again in the same area to get the coins again. As I mentioned, I'm trying hard not to confuse you here, but you can only use the potion twice to get coins. So it's best to use it in an area where there's lots of vegetables, so it all becomes about where you place the potion. And as you play through the game, you will start to remember where the larger clusters of vegetables are, and you should be able to accumulate a lot of coins. You can also find, again, mushrooms in each level to build up your power meter. Unfortunately, your meter always goes to 2 when you enter a new level, so it's best to use the potions regularly on each level to find the mushrooms to give you some extra hits to keep you going. Also, these levels are again not as linear as the ones in Mario Bros, but are a lot deadlier. How deadly you ask? Well, how about this level where these birds throw bombs at you from the skies? Or this ice level where Bezos cruelly race towards you trying to hit you as you slip and slide on the terrain. It can be an extremely cruel game with some sections feeling next to impossible, so you really have to dig down deep and rely on a lot of old school platforming and thought to get through. Mario 2 is fast moving, keeps you on your toes and throws oodles of hurdles in your way, making for a very fun but ultimately challenging game. Video Game Presentation Having just come off playing the original Mario Brothers and being used to how good this game looked, played and sounded, when I was a child my eyes popped out of my head. This game is much more colourful, melodic, brighter and everything looks visually appealing with the main protagonists looking like they should and each enemy being very well pixelated. The game feels like a huge Saturday morning cartoon at times with a number of visuals and effects that are occurring. The music again is extremely catchy with the boss theme always building up tension. Each world looks absolutely stunning with each one feeling completely different to the last. So although each level is separate, it does feel like you're progressing on this long journey and that they're all connected to the next one. Do I have any gripes with this game? 
Well this is going to be hard for me to explain, because most of the problems I had with this game was because I was trying to rush through. You see it is indeed a platform game, but due to the size and scope and challenge that each new level presents, rushing through only serves to get you killed quicker. The more I rushed, the more I died, and it was all because I was trying to treat it like a traditional platform game. Once I stopped and realised that I had to play a lot more strategically, most of the gripes disappeared and it got slightly easier. I know it sounds completely obvious, but you must take your time with this game and learn to farm for coins and lives. I will say that this game has many frustrating sections which I admit can cause frustration and anger if you're trying to battle through, but honestly, perseverance is the key, and also again learning the timing of the bonus chance to gain precious extra lives. If there was one thing I hated, it was having to fight Birdo time and time again on almost every single level. After a while, it just got a bit boring for me, and as challenging as they were, it just felt like a lot of repetition. In fact, I got more enjoyment fighting Mauser because his boss fights were spread out. Plus on this game you only get two continues and the more mistakes you make the less chance you have of making it towards and beating him to win the game. Final boss and video game ending. Ok so having played through all 7 worlds and clambered to this cave section, you will find a simple crystal ball and bird's mouth as before. As soon as you touch the ball and pick it up, the bird's mouth suddenly throws a temper tantrum and starts to attack your chosen protagonist. You have to use the mushrooms here to bash it back into submission before it finally gives up and lets you enter the final room of the game which is Wart's Domain. I'll be honest with you, Walk can seem a lot more difficult than he is. The idea is that you need to avoid his bubbles and grab a vegetable that constantly comes from the machine in the middle of the room. You have to throw the vegetable in his mouth when it's open and this will cause him damage. Now I know that this is the tried and tested way of doing it, but as a kid I did it in a very slightly different way, as I found his bubbles were very difficult to avoid at times and being very young I didn't know what to do. So. I used Princess, grabbed the vegetable and jumped and floated right behind him as he only fires from the front he couldn't hurt me. This meant I was free to throw the vegetable from behind him and it still hit his mouth. I found this method although it took longer to kill him a lot safer as I didn't have the pressure of the bubbles trying to hit me. Whichever way you prefer, you have to hit Wart 6 times before he bites the dust. No matter who you play as, the ending is the same. The game shows Wart's corpse being carried out by the inhabitants of Subcon who are cheering our heroes who stand majestically above a block overlooking the scene. It is at this point that the game tells you how many times each character was used whilst the celebrations continue. I can't tell you how relieved I was to finally beat the game in full. As a kid I did use warps which are scattered about various levels and those helped me actually get to war and beat him quickly, but this run was done straight through with no warps and by mastering the bonus slot machine where I was able to get a few 5 ups and 2 ups. I had a good selection of lives to help me get through the game and I knew once I had done it I had beaten a tricky game. So there you have it, once War has croaked you are then left with a credit screen with one of the most awesomely composed 8 bit chip tunes filling your ears as poor Mario realises that his efforts were in fact just a dream. So by the game's logic, Mario had a dream within a dream. I also like the idea of the dream world being subcon. And this is where my theory comes into place because at the beginning of this review I mentioned about the subconscious and about repressed feelings and Freud and this is my theory as to why the events of Mario 2 took place. My theory is that Mario's first adventure took a huge toll on him psychologically and his dream or adventure was a representation of all the things he had repressed or feared in his own mind. Take for example the world of Subcon being so far removed from what Mario was used to. Yet in his mind the tools that helped him prevail 
as in the first game, such as mushroom stars and coins are present, but used and acquired in different ways, so it's almost like Mario is facing his fears in a dream where logic does not exist, in that he can pretty much go in any direction. This was something I thought about after playing the game after all these years, and it made me think that maybe Mario Bros. 2 had a much deeper significance and meaning than I once originally thought. Okay, so what are my final thoughts on this game? Super Mario Bros. 2 is a phenomenal game for the NES, and I can't recommend it highly enough. There are those out there who probably say that this isn't the true sequel to Mario. Well, it to me, it kind of is, because it was the game that I grew up with. I mean, I can understand, like, when the lost levels come out for the Super Nintendo that people were like oh well this is the actual sequel now but that game's are much harder than the Mario Brothers 2 that we've got and very challenging so I think also back in the day Nintendo were taking a real chance because they would release a game and like for example The Legend of Zelda and that game was just phenomenally fantastic but then they released Link's Adventure which was slightly different so they kind of hadn't really they perfected the Mario formula in the first game, but I think also they wanted to try something different and prove that Mario, the strength of Mario's character could succeed even if they changed the gameplay and I think they took a chance and they pulled it off. But I will say Mario Bros. 2 can be quite frustrating, um, very difficult because as I mentioned before, it's a platform game but you have to strategize, you have to reap coins, you have to collect mushrooms and um, some of the bosses can be quite challenging and the fact you only get two continues means that you really need to get as many lives as you can uh, to survive because again the more lives you have the further you're going to get through this game so with that i give mario brothers 2 a 4.5 out of 5 and say play this game if you haven't already thank you so much for checking out my review if you liked it please don't forget to comment like and subscribe to support my channel keep checking back for new content and please don't forget to give me some feedback as well and join me next time for another richard minor review take it easy and i'll see you soon